everyone. Today, I'll talk about two things I love very much in life food and music. <laughs> and by drawing analogy between these two things, I'd like to call into question the traditionally accepted hierarchy in things. So, let's say there is a writer of recipe for a dish. And then there is the chef that creates the dish based on this recipe. And then there is the person who eats it. Who is the most important person in, amongst the three? So the person who writes the recipe, the person who cooks the recipe, and the person who eats the recipe. The same thing goes for music. The person who writes the music, the person who creates the music, and the person who listens to the music. Now, in the tradition of Western classical music, I won't go into the aesthetical history behind this, but today it is most commonly accepted that the composer is the most creative and therefore the most um, important. And then the player of the piece that the composer had written uh, is sort of the vehicle and the conduit and the listener is the consumer, passive um, in the creation of the music. And I question that very much. So let's use a very famous example of Bach's C major prelude that goes like this. So, according to the tradition, as a player, I will honor what Bach wrote and will not change anything. So what he wrote is this half note, one, two, 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 and then he was. So, most simply, most sort of um, recreated in the most standard way, it would be played like this. But there's a lot of things that a chef can do uh, on top of the recipe that the composer Bach had written as a recipe for this music. For example, so by adding pedal, I can change the texture. So it's like, you know, it's like, let's say it's a porridge, right? You feel a lot of grain without the petal, but if you put a lot of petal into it, it's more mush, right? And then I can, I can do things with my finger, therefore holding it as a chord, making it mushier, right? Or on to the other extreme, I can do... A pianist like Glenn Gould do, would do something like that. This almost is like popping the grain, right? So making a popcorn or whatever, or you popped oats or something. There are other things that you can do. For example, 
the volume I often equate to temperature in dishes that you serve. So if I were to play very pianissimo, very, very softly. Maybe this is very cold. Or if I were to be very, um, generous with my sound. Very enveloping, sort of like a warm soup on a cold winter day. Um, or I could vary the tempo. As a listener, you can pay attention to the texture, to each note or groups of notes, or you can actually make up melodies on top of this pattern in your head as you listen. In fact, you know this. It's Ave Maria that is supposed to be superimposed on Bach's prelude, this prelude, um, that was written by Gounod, a 19th century French composer. It's very, very famous. I'm sure you've heard it. Uh, it's, and it's, it has the lyric of Ave Maria. A piece like this, prelude by Bach like this, is basically simple harmonic progression that is broken up into notes, um, you can actually make up your own melody as you listen to it. Or whatever. That's how you actively listen. That's how you actively participate in the creation of music as a listener and also as a player. You can, you can be so creative in the act of listening or in the act of interpreting, interpreting an already written score. So the composer relies on the player and the listener. Remember, a piece of music printed on a music has no sound and so the music will not exist if we're missing any part of the three the, the composer the creator and the listener i will play the entire prelude and please listen creatively